Welcome back. Today we'll be talking about a beautiful Hawaiian ballad entitled Sanoe, written by Queen Liliu Okalani. I think before I get into the technical things, um, I'll just play the melody for you in a very simple single note style, and then we'll talk about some of the things that happened. Thumb style. Now, there's a lot of things we can do with this piece, but probably we should attend to the basic things. You notice that my hand was moving up by the fifth fret. We call this the fifth position because one, two, three, four, five. Our first finger is oriented to that fifth fret, and we have four notes in that area, four frets without stretching. And in this piece, we have to learn a number of new notes. So if we look at them, in the first position, you learned on the first string, A, B, C. Well, they have the same notes on the second string, beginning on the fifth fret, A, B, C. The first string has completely new notes, so as we go from the open first string, A, B, C, after C comes D, so that's fifth fret, and then on the seventh fret, E, and on the 8th fret, F. A good thing to do would be to walk through these notes and say their names out loud as you play them. A, B, C, D, E, F, and so forth. Do them randomly and uh, feel very confident about where those notes are. Now to get up there, is a little bit of a challenge if you haven't done it before, but it becomes pretty second nature after a little bit of practice. So when I start this piece, it begins with a pickup on beat three. So it's in triple meter. I'll count one, two, and we'll start on beat three. One, two, one, two, three. So at that point, from this note C, I have to go up and play the high E. And that means I'll have to actually shift the entire arm up there. The best way to do that is to use what we call a guide finger. So as I play this, I leave this finger in contact with the string. I feel it as I glide up to the seventh fret. And the most important thing is to look at the seventh fret. Don't try to follow your hand because you'll probably miss because your hand can move faster than you can see. There we go. Now to come back from that, um, the easiest way after we're up there, let's see, play this note A open and as that rings you'll bring your hand back. After you've practiced shifting a few times, you'll be flying up and down the fingerboard like a pro. The most important thing to remember is look at the target, look at the fret you're shifting to or the position, don't try to follow your hand. And the visual confirmation at first is important, but eventually you can do it by feel. But most of you will have these dots on here to help you out that mark out the fifth and the seventh frets. Okay, the next thing to consider on Sanoe is the accompaniment pattern. Uh, we're recommending arpeggio, arpeggio, and um, we played the piami pattern before on a couple pieces earlier in the course. Just a quick review, P-I-M-A-M-I, -A -M -I. Um, six notes, six strokes in eighth note motion creates the the sound of three beats. So here it is, the chords for Sanoi played with the Piami arpeggio. 
issue. If the arpeggio is too much for you, you are welcome to do a strum. A strum sounds beautiful. You're not shortchanging us or anything. Uh, the simplest strum, which often sounds good in ensembles because you have other people doing things and you don't want to be too busy and cover up the melody, is simply one strum every three beats. That sounds really beautiful against somebody doing the piami arpeggio strum. They work together really nicely. And of course, if you want to have a little more feel to the rhythm, you can strum on three beats, three down strokes like this. Notice how I accent the first one. that they're in triple meter. So there we have it, Sanoe. How to shift up and down from first to fifth position, how to produce an accompaniment.